Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to another Moon Colony live stream. It's great to see everybody. Uh, I see there's a lot of people here already. It's nice to see everyone. Um, I hope you're all having a, a lovely week so far. I know we're we're a day early for our stream this week. We're on a Tuesday and a Wednesday today, but uh, it's going to be a good one. Um, I've got uh, Leonie here with us today. Hello, Leonie. How are you doing? Hello. <laughs> How are you guys? How are you, Jaden? <laughs> oh, I'm good, thank you. I'm good, I'm good. Um, <laughs> and uh, you're going to be doing some water VFX for us today. Well, yeah, so apparently, doesn't, yes. Doesn't doesn't have to be water, I suppose. Any kind of liquid will do. <laughs> but yeah, um, yes, as Skullpel said, we are releasing our inner water benders today, and exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be great. So Leone has kindly put together some resources for us. So if you wanted to follow along with us today, then if you look in Discord in our Twitch text channel, there's a resource file that I've linked in our in our going live message. So go in there and you'll get this Photoshop document and you'll get a few reference uh, a few reference images as well. Um, exactly. And you can you can follow along. I think the poses are nice and dynamic. You, there's a lot of options with what you could do with those. Um, but I'll kind of let let Leone talk about them a bit more. He's the one that drew them. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, when JD proposed the idea of we doing like water VFX, uh, at first I thought just doing the VFX, but with the description. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about water bending, I said, okay, we can do something that is more involved, thinking about how to apply that to a character or something. So mm -hmm. I did this uh, three quick poses just for us to have something to work with. Uh, and I think it's fun that I didn't uh, imply what the VFX would be, which with which one of these. You, you can do whatever you want. So if you want something that is more flowy and peaceful or a wave or something that is pretty intense you can do whatever you want with this so uh it will be fun so uh as Jaden said you have to release your inner out uh water bender <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um... so in terms of reference uh because like in general i prepare like half an hour before stream, I I I do things really quick. I go on Pinterest and gather some uh, random references of how people did uh, water effects in the past. So uh, here I have some options that are uh, kind of cartoony and game oriented, probably in terms of the effects. This this type of reference is nice. Uh, for example, this could be like the guys releasing a, a, a Hadouken power. Yeah. <laughs> like a water jet. This is also like very flowy, very nice. Uh, some of these are actually from animation, like actual VFX uh, of elements that you can find on ArtStation if you search for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Other artists, VFX artists do studies of uh different types of materials it it's nice sometimes uh okay so i have something that is more realistic in terms of waves i think this is actually a painting this i don't i'm not i'm not sure because it's not super high res this is a painting yeah uh i i selected this once because i like the change in hue uh, mm -hmm. in the colors and also the shapes of the, of the waves uh, so this is more wavy, I think. Uh, no, no. I, I thought this one was in the the, the other also, but it, it is not. Uh, okay. Uh, here we have some that are more realistic because water is actually transparent. It's not yeah. blue. <laughs> <laughs> the blue of the water is like reflections from the sky and other elements. Uh, so here you have some reference that are a little more realistic if you want 
to do something like that. Here I have some that are really nice in terms of shape. I, I like I, uh, people that know my work know that I, I like uh, simple shapes very much. Mm -hmm. So I will gravitate towards this for sure. But also some of these artists that did some that are more realistic, but also have interesting shapes to it. So this is what I, I gather like in uh, 20 minutes, just searching for some images and and putting on files for you to, to know. But like uh, if you're going to do uh, this uh, for real, like in a studio environment, you can do a, a better selection of references and think about what you're actually looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe even understanding better how water actually works, not just getting like work from other artists and yeah. uh, study from them. But one thing that uh, you can see throughout these references, uh, I see uh, some elements that are important. First of all, shape. Shape is always the most important thing. If you do a nice silhouette, uh, it's already like half the, the work done. So you have the outer shape, which is the silhouette, and also inner shapes that you can do with uh, usually these foam or like white parts in water. Usually these have more to do with a salty water from the sea or something that you have this foam thing. But you can see that almost everyone do some kind of like white lines or things to, to make uh, the direction of the flow a little bit more obvious. Uh, this creates a nice effect. And also another important aspect is the transparency, uh, which like for VFX like this, which they are like in a, a like a gray or black background, you you don't have too much to work with in terms of uh, transparency. But this is a Think that is very important for you to consider when you're doing a natural illustration when you have water effects is think about uh, the the transparency and also the refraction of the light when the light uh, enters water it kind of refracts to several directions so these are important aspects that you should think about when you're doing this uh, so you, if you are on our Discord community, you have access to this file dump yes. of references and also the the poses, so we can start sketching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I'll just drop a I'll just drop a link to the Discord in the chat for those who uh, those who aren't in our community. Um, so be sure to join. As you say, you get reference you. Grab all of these references and this Photoshop file in there as well. Yeah. So, uh, first thing I will do here, and probably uh, if you're new to this type of exercise, I would recommend you to do that. Try to find an interesting shape to start working with. For example, I can do uh, simple wavy lines, things like that, thinking about something that passing behind the character and, and then in the front or something like this can be seen in the front. I can think about what is the, the flow of the movement. For example, if it's flowing backwards like this, or it can be something that is like going forward. Uh, simple things like that. So mm -hmm. I would do a bunch of this small like shape ideas just to figure out what I want to do first before committing to something. So I think this one I will do more like a, a wavy thing like this. Sure. I can I can counterbalance the the, the way the, the character is, is placed or I can actually follow the uh, the way the arms are posed a little bit better. I can think about 
maybe for example she's doing something that the the water is going in front or something like that so just uh experiment try to get to some interesting results in this early stage um i will just say that we have as as i should have predicted we have had a uh, wave of hydrates coming in. So, Let's go. Uh, <laughs> thank you, everybody, so much for looking after us. It's much appreciated. I hope you all drink with me. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I saw Alan also gave us a posture check, but I'm also I'm already sat up pretty straight. But thank you, Alan. Um, what have we got? We've thank got you. some people saying uh, this stream's perfect. Uh, there was someone in, in Discord, who was it, to say the stream's perfect because they're working on a character that uses water. Uh, oh, it was Crafts. They're working on a character that bends water. Nice. Um, it'd be interesting to see a stream where Jaden learns how to draw. It Maybe. <laughs> maybe. It'd be very basic. I'll just be drawing boxes for two hours. No, if, if we get to 1 million subscribers we'll have Jaden drawing <laughs> review drawing stream. yeah uh, chicken man I was about to play some Baldur's Gate but maybe I'm going to study good idea good idea yeah it's nice actually uh, I, I also think that these streams are very interesting because uh, if you ask me how much do you study probably I say uh, I don't <laughs> in general <laughs> I just uh, this by this uh, point in the career I I almost only do actual work I don't take uh, take too much time for myself uh, mm -hmm. to study and like if you ask me how many times I did this in the past like water effects and not much and, and yeah. VFX like this like posing a character and do VFX I I, I don't do that very often. So for me, it's, a, it's actually a study. And I can show you guys how I would tackle this problem. So if I have to work on some VFX for a game or something, this would be what I would think about, you know? Yeah. Okay. Maybe this one, for example, he can be like projecting a wave that can be like behind him like behind, that. Yeah. or on the front like pushing water on the front like this could be interesting i will probably have to uh, uh, scale down move their uh, the characters mm -hmm. to fit the, the effects this one, I maybe think it can be something that is more peaceful, maybe. Like the water is kind of flowing. Yeah. Gives me oh, gives sweet. me healer healer vibes. Yeah, maybe. It's not action. It's not uh an attack or something. Yeah, yeah. But it can be also like a very powerful mage. Yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, pulling up like yeah, huge, raising uh, loads of wave. waves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lynch just said, "I hope this will help me. I've had a hard time drawing elements with randomized details and shapes like lightning bolts." Oh example. yeah, it's hard. I it, it's not easy for me. I th I can say that. I always struggle uh, drawing elements like fire, lightning, um, water, smoke, this type of things that we sometimes have to do. Uh, I'm not good at it, I would say. So we get you on stream to do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it, it's nice. Uh, I, I think for me... Uh, the streams that I do, probably they are less uh, like tutorials or something. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, at least 
in, in my head, it's an exercise for me. So it's something that I am interested in learning to get better. So we do streams. So we yeah. learn together, you know? Yeah, that's a good way to, that's a good way to look at it, actually. It's a joint learning opportunity for you and everybody else. Yeah. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, Leonie, would you advise to draw, to draw the shape or paint it with a bigger brush? Or is it just however you feel comfortable doing it? I mean, it seems like you're drawing the shape out first, at least. Roughly yeah, I'm, I'm, I usually think more in lines, but you can do in shapes. And mm -hmm. also one trick that is nice, you can just do a, a shape like this, you know, with lasso, which mm -hmm. is very good also. Uh, if you have time, I would advise you to do three different methods. Try with okay. lines and then try with lasso tool, which you, you're going to do like a draw a shape and fill it like mm -hmm. this. I like it. Uh, doing that is, is nice. You have a, a, a nice energy if you like flow with the the lasso and then close it to, to do something like this. Or you can do actually thinking about uh, brushes. Uh, like this, so you're like carving out a shape with the brush like this, you know? Yeah. This can also be very interesting. I feel like they kind okay. of, they, they all kind of provide different results as well. Yeah, exactly. Uh, what I, uh, in my experience, uh, I tend to gravitate toward dra drawing with lines because mm -hmm. I think I'm primarily uh, someone that draws rather than paint. Uh, it's funny because I think the best aspect of my work is the painting, not the drawing. But because the way I learned how to draw, it was always lines. Uh, like I started with digital when I was 21 or something. Yeah. So I was just drawing before that. Uh, so. If I don't think about it, I will gravitate towards doing with the lines. But mm -hmm. with shapes is also nice. But uh, with lasso is the best one for me because I can do shapes that are very appealing, I would say. Yeah, I think I think we've we've commented on your lasso abilities before. Yeah, so it's it's like and I, actually the lasso is kind of new for me uh like it's i don't know three or four years ago i started doing it yeah i did not use lasso before so for me it was a nice addition <laughs> mm -hmm. to my uh, belt of abilities <laughs> <laughs> were you i don't know if you were watching when we had Alex Heath on the other day. Uh, when was yeah, that? I was not watching live, ago? but I watched it later on YouTube. Oh, and yeah. It was a great, it was great. Yeah, and he, he was like, yeah, I don't use the lasso tool. It's broken for, for me. So he uses the pen tool instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it depends a lot on the, your pre mm. preferences. Uh, it works for some, not for others. Yeah. So that's the, the thing. Like. Uh, if you see, I don't know, the way Alex Alexandrov works is totally different from my way of working. I love the way he does stuff. I would yeah. love to be able to do things that way, <laughs> but I tried and did the work for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. The way he thinks about brushes, shapes, uh, drawing and everything is different. So you can have to you have to at a certain point uh kind of accept like what is your uh style in mm -hmm. a way like i would say that especially if you're a beginner it's important for you to try different stuff i tried a lot of different stuff uh, actually if you look at my portfolio i have some older pieces that are a little bit more realistic or something uh I, I tried a bunch of different stuff before I find 
the way I like to do my drawings. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is actually a natural uh, thing to happen. You don't need to search for it. You just do what you like, uh, study the artist that you like, and little by little, your art will start uh, uh, like being controlled and uh, yeah. be refined to something that you actually think works for you, you know? Yeah, I think, I wonder how much of the, how much of an artist's style just comes from their method of problem solving. Uh, things end up looking a certain way just because of the way you're going about certain problems. Yeah. And also, what really interests you, like in terms of not just uh, color, shapes, and things like that, mm -hmm. but also themes. What yeah. kind of theme uh, you gravitate towards? Or even mood. You like spooky stuff or goofy stuff, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, Chicken Man said, yeah, I've been trying to make a list of three artists that I like because you gave the advice of studying artists uh, that we that we like. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you know, it's just two or three people, that's, I don't know, would you, would you say that it's better to have a, a smaller pool than a larger pool of artists to take from? Mm, uh, I, I said this on stream before. But yeah. what I did in the beginning, uh, I was opening the like uh, pages like Pinterest or at the time it was Deviant Art. Yeah. Open the the page and just scroll and see things that you like. And it, when you see something that you think that is very, really interesting, for example, a helmet design, a creature, or the way someone drew a face or whatever. You stop and do a sketch of that. I, yeah. I did that on paper. So I I would fill four pages of my sketchbook every day with my observations. And then after a while, like the uh, next year or something, I would look at my sketchbooks and copy from my uh, copies, you know? So yeah. I would do like a second pass, sometimes merging ideas into a other thing. So when you do that, you can kind of understand what you really gravitate towards. When you see something that you think is interesting and see, oh, I, I want to draw this. Okay, so you have, you start uh, creating a, a amalgamation of everything that you like and see, oh, okay, I, I know that I like drawing characters and mm -hmm. this and that type of character. And also like if it's uh, I don't know, futuristic or if it's medieval or whatever type of theme, you do you think it's nicer? You know, you you start uh, making your style more cohesive. You know, yeah. For example, I I like sci-fi, but I I never drew anything sci-fi for myself, so I don't have to force this into myself. You know, because if I really wanted to do it i would do it but i don't do it yeah I, so yeah i already know that i'm not a sci-fi artist you know i was trying to i was trying to think about what i don't think we've yeah i don't think we've got you to do anything sci-fi at least on the stream anyway but... yeah we we could we could try one time for for a challenge or something, but mm. it would not be my comfort zone at all. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that wouldn't. I don't know. There wouldn't be much point. I don't think <laughs> pulling you yeah. out of your comfort zone for no reason. Uh, this is is not something that I did a lot. For example, mm. well, water VFX and what I'm doing right now. But I could say that is my comfort zone because it's just shapes, colors. Yeah, and it's it's cartoony, simplified. Mm. You know, <laughs> I was gonna say what really makes what really makes this is the foam. I think the sea foam. 
going running through it. Yeah. It's really nice, but getting the getting the placement right. I mean it looks it looks nice and you've seen you made it look really easy. But having those sort of semi random uh, placements is quite difficult, I can imagine. Yeah, and it's it's a trial and error thing. I yeah. I had to do it a couple of times and I struggled a lot. Mm -hmm. um, especially in a card game environments I right? yeah. have to do something that is readable uh, in a, a small size and you have mm -hmm. to make it look that is like it's intense and interesting yeah sometimes can be very hard so I, I struggled a lot with uh, wave effects and water <laughs> in the past mm -hmm. so I know uh, what I uh, what were my mistakes in the past? So I'm trying to do it better this time. So yeah. I think this second line of water like this can be interesting. Okay. Secondary wave or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it gives it gives the impression that the water is actually coming out, like going outwards, like an yeah. explosion. Yeah, and also, uh, even for people that are not animators, mm. uh, in Photoshop, you can do simple animations. For example, make the, the this point of the waves like go up and down, and also these effect, effects on the, the bottom, like uh, uh, getting more transparent and extruding like this. Yeah. If you do like simple stuff like this, you can really sell your ideas. So if you're trying to do a VFX artist uh, portfolio, I would highly advise you to do like simple animations. So what is the like the beginning point of the animation? What is the end? So this could mm -hmm. like grow and become really big, or or just us rotate around the character or something yeah this is nice yeah those simple animations are like just a few frames can make a, a real nice impact yeah uh so here and says i have so many artists that i that i like i combine all the knowledge my art oh yeah that's going back to when we were talking about um, studying artists that we enjoy yeah 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 uh, i would say that the way i i learned and my career progressed is it was random yeah it was not planned <laughs> i i did not think about it i was just drawing and doing whatever i wanted and also at the same time working with clients that have their own ideas their own yeah. ne uh, necessity so i would just draw whatever they ask me to draw. For example, I always say that uh, me working with card games and doing digital painting was totally random because I I was only drawing comics and making like simpler drawings uh, in terms of shading. It was like so, just flat draw, uh, shading on the, the drawings. Yeah. And then I got an opportunity to work in a game that was like more like Magic the Gathering yeah. style. And I said, yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't draw like that, but I don't care. I, I'll be able to work with illustration, which is my goal. So I took it and like my career took a hard turn because I really enjoyed doing it. It was not yeah. planned. Yeah. yeah, I wonder I wonder how many other artists say the same thing. And they're like, well, I just kind of fell into it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's important for you guys to have go and pursue what you want. But yeah. at the same time, keep your mind open because mm. things that you don't know that you like can appear and you actually enjoy it uh, after yeah. you try it. 
you know so at least for me my career was flowy like water you know yeah yeah it was just finding itself uh, without thinking too much about it uh, of course that i i did decisions of course it was not just oh i'm i'm just floating right uh, sometimes i could choose between one and the other thing so i can like work in a studio or be a freelancer or whatever uh and I'll, of course i know that i like games i like uh stylized mm -hmm. art so things that give me the opportunity to do that mm -hmm. uh, i will i will go for it you know yeah i think it's i think as you say it's important to have a goal but be open keep your mind open to other opportunities that might come along yeah we don't know what uh, the world is going to be like in five years ten years or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah true especially especially if you're you are very young for example when i was uh, thinking about university mm. i entered university in 2006 and there was no smartphones no youtube like there was no career for me thinking about oh i'm working from home to an international studio with games yeah. this was unthinkable uh <laughs> i i it did not cross through my mind that i could do that you know yeah but like things were evolving i did not work with digital also so it was uh like life is happening things are changing and you have to adapt yeah, there's always something new around the corner. Yeah, we never know what's going to happen. So we have all these AI thing that can change the landscape or not, or can, I don't know, take a hard turn to something else. We mm -hmm. never know what's going to happen. Yeah, very true, very true. Um... Oh, we were talking, when we were talking about um, your art style, or like, yeah, your art style fitting sci-fi work. Flo in chat said, um, Leone, it depends on what sci-fi you're going for. Considering your style and your work, I'm pretty convinced you could rock it on a more fantasy sci-fi, like uh, Wildstar, for example. And that's a throwback. Um, yeah, for it, example, rather it's than like... Halo or like a hard sci-fi. Like yeah, 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 yeah. I... I'm not against trying different stuff in that sense. So, for example, if for a job I had to do like some concepts or drop characters for sci-fi, I would say, okay, I will study it. I will try my best. Yeah. And yeah, maybe. But it's not something that I gravitate towards. Um, yeah, in, for sure. Uh, like, I never draw robots and or something like that. And I would struggle. I'm I'm sure that would be a little bit hard. It would not be easy to just mm. oh okay draw like a giant robot right now. <laughs> it would be hard. I would have to study a lot. Okay, uh. this one. Thinking about it. Hmm. It's like a... how I want to make this work. I don't know if this is a nice idea to have like maybe uh, parts that are separated or not in that mm. sense. So I, I will try just to, to see if it works or not. Sure. Also, the the overlap is, is good when you have something that is a gold. Uh, in the front and in the back like this. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice way to show the the flow of the of the water. Give it some, give it some depth. Okay, let me think about this. Maybe it's like two different uh, streams. streams of water. Yeah. Let's... Oh yeah, 
I think I... one thing that is important in that stage, in this stage, is mm -hmm. don't stress too much about it. Just try it and erase it if it's not good. So don't go to details too soon because yeah. if you need it, you can change it. For example, this side of the shape is not very good. So right now I'm, I'm actually mixing painting with uh, shapes directly. I already erased my lines. I did something with lasso also. So just use whatever you think uh, yeah. it works for the moment. <laughs> so I've already, I've already been told. Oh, I've already had my first uh, water of the day. What? Water. It's not how I sound, guys. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Would you rather I said water? Water. I don't know. Today we will be doing a stream on water. Why not? Said I've always had clear goals for my career, but while I had goals, I had no control over reality. So um, yeah, it's true exactly. that a lot, of, a lot of hard moments happen. But at the end of the day, it's most important to enjoy the moments that you can, uh, when you can still paint. Exactly. And, and also value what you get, because mm -hmm. you, you never know if you're going to succeed or not, if you're going to lose it or not. You, we never know. Yeah. yeah life life is unpredictable so maybe we can have something that gets in the way of what's continuing drawing so make it enjoyable as much as you can yeah oh we even have a little little story from alan as well uh, same for me leone i didn't know what was possible uh except drawing comics and caricature yeah, I didn't this want, I didn't was the only. Of them. <laughs> exactly. Like for comics, for example, we had a uh, Brazilian artist working with Marvel and DC. Uh, so we knew that, oh, I, ha I know a guy that took colors for Marvel Comics or whatever. So it was just, oh, this is a possibility. I can try that. So uh, mm -hmm. this is one thing that is very important. How, like, our world works and uh, is that uh, when you don't know what is possible you you, you cannot pursue that yeah. uh, thing because you, you you don't know how to do it but if you have someone that already did it's way easier especially if <laughs> this person give lessons or whatever so I would say that nowadays is way easier for you to find your style and what you want because you have uh, a lot of uh, references to, yeah. to, to follow you know if I show you guys how I draw when I was 21 20 years old when I was like finishing college it was very bad <laughs> and like the kids nowadays with I don't know 18 19 years old are like way better but so impressive because yeah, it's, it's way easier to have references and know what is good and what is not mm -hmm. to compare yourself. Uh, this can be tricky to balance because it can be something that pulls you back because you'll see how amazing other artists are. But if you can make this into a positive thing, you can really uh, uh, evolve quickly, you know. Yeah. Uh oh, I, my pen stopped working for a moment. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. Uh, Flo said, isn't it a little too easy to fall into a trap of thinking you're going for a style that might be yours, even though it's really just being influenced by something you've already seen too much? Yeah, especially if you only work with uh, one or two references, mm -hmm. you start becoming a copycat of that 
artist that you like. Yeah. So I think in that sense it's it's good if you have a broad uh uh like amount of references. Yeah, like, yeah broad you spectrum. Like different stuff. Mm. Yeah. I I I think my style is not very unique. At least for me, I think it's kind of generic in the sense, oh, this is like, oh, just cartoony, stylized, colorful characters that you've seen a bunch of times. Yeah. But uh, I actually don't care that much. <laughs> <laughs> I just draw whatever I, I like and I have a job that pays my bills and I'm okay with being... I I I know I never felt that I'm, I'm a huge artist. I think myself as more of a problem solver than an artist per se. You know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. It's interesting that you you think about it that way. Yeah. For example, I did uh, the visual arts university. Yeah. Here. So it's like we learn about history, art history. We learn about like traditional techniques, how to do uh, like pottery, sculpture. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, everything. That's cool. How to, That's really cool. How to draw, how to create a brush, like a real brush with wow. a fur and doing the the paper and screens and all, yeah. so all of that it's like very traditional in that's sense. really cool and like my co uh, uh my friends uh were people that are more artists in a way that oh i i don't care about the market i don't care about money or whatever oh you know? it's yeah like the the artist uh type of guy and I was never like that. I was always super logical and thinking about not making money per se, but like having my art to uh, feel uh, objective. It's not yeah. artsy and exploratory, you know, I never felt that way. So that's why I, I, I say that I'm not an artist in that sense, you know. Sure. Uh, Ignacio has asked Leone if you were an, if you were an avatar, what element would you control? <laughs> All of them, because I'm the avatar. You would be the avatar. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> no, okay, uh, because I, I thought he said if you were the avatar. No, <laughs> no. If, yeah, you were, if you were in, if you're like in Avatar, oh, okay. in the world of Avatar. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, probably Airbender. Airbender, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think, I think I'd probably want to be water. Water bending seems pretty, pretty relaxing. Yeah, one of, one of the two for me. I think the more flowy bends like water yeah. and what and air for sure. Yeah. Didn't they? Didn't they introduce like blood bending at, at some point? I'm not. I don't know. That would yeah. be cool, but. Yeah, evil. it's it's <laughs> like a evil water bending, which is yeah. super cool. Uh, Marco said, "Yeah, come on, this job is more about being artisan than being an artist. And that's a good thing." Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And like, uh, you you can be both. You can have like a, a regular job which you're just problem solving and you can have your artistic career which is more expressive and yeah. fluid you do whatever you want you can do both you know? Mm -hmm. i know a bunch of artists that do both yeah it's kind of like the i feel like the the, the peak of being an, a problem solving artist are the people that do conservation so they they get like 
they get a painting from 200 years ago that has I don't know that, that's lost a load of paint so they need to go in and, and fix it touch it all up and clean it and everything without destroying it and still preserving the original artist's vision that to yeah. me is like the, the pinnacle of I'm an artist but I also like jigsaw puzzles <laughs> yeah and like I don't care about my expression yeah yeah would, exactly yeah I would do uh, like the vision of others mm, yeah which is cool I think I, I I have my style because it's the the style that is easier for me Mm -hmm. But I never care too much about, like, oh, I only draw like this. I don't want to draw anything else. Like, for work, I did, like, at several different styles. and So, for me, it's okay to yeah. do that. When I was a teenager, I, I liked music and illustration. And I understood that I would be a professional professional illustrator and not a musician because yeah. as an illustrator I can draw whatever the client wants it's a profession mm -hmm. I'm a yeah. professional in that sense and for music it's hobby because I just want to play whatever songs I want I don't want sure. to play a style that I don't like you know so yeah. it's it's different and also uh, I think this is a very important topic because a lot of people say that they want to work with illustration because they love drawing but for some people if you actually work with it you can start hating it mm -hmm. you know because it can be boring it can be you have types of work that are not appealing to you for some reason yeah so it's not a, a problem if you take this as a hobby you know think mm -hmm. about that sometimes uh if you if if working with drawing is something that stress you a lot maybe you just think it this is a hobby or and you're actually an artist and you just want to express yourself and you can have other things that you do to make money and have the arts like your pure vision of arts yeah. maintained you know i don't I think... think this is a, a problem at all you know yeah I think that's something that is similar in, in any kind of job, right? Like you could, uh, I don't know, you could really love baking, right? You could yeah. love making making cakes for people and stuff. But then if you open up a bakery, you'll get you'll get a client come in and say, "Hey, I want a fourteen tier wedding cake that is rainbow colors," and you're like, "Oh, I really don't want to do that." But yeah, exactly. Yeah, you've got you've got to do it. So it's it can yeah, be applied like to anything. You, you can you can like cooking, but you don't want to work in a restaurant. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. So with art, it's the same. Like you have to think about it. You like producing art, or you think about yourself as a problem solver in the industry and have to yeah. like do 50 sketches of something. <laughs> this can be very boring for you if you don't if you're not into it you know hmm. yeah i think i think as flo said it's it flo said you, you've got to you've got to get to work knowing it's a job yeah, yeah i think i think that's right you just have to remind yourself sometimes that no matter yeah, what of course no matter what job you do it's going to have boring parts to it yeah, yeah and like we all uh, artists that work in this industry of course mm -hmm. we love doing it and we love when we can actually express ourselves and the the styles that we like in mm -hmm. the client's work it's nice I like i love drawing drawing for hearthstone doing streams yeah. like this drawing these things uh it's kind of a job i would probably not do it if i was <laughs> not asked, <laughs> asked to do it but it's fun i'm having fun by doing that you know so uh it, this is the balance that i think everyone wants to get to Mm -hmm. right like oh you, it's actually a job pay your bills and it's fun so this is like the ultimate goal yeah but sometimes can be not fun i have to like deal with clients and the things that they want can be like have a vision of something that is not what i intended and said okay 
in that that time you have to separate yourself from the work say okay i will yeah. do your vision i cannot I, sometimes i will not agree but okay i will do what you want and deliver and i will not let this uh like influence me and make me feel sad or mm -hmm. personally attacked because some artists really <laughs> feel attacked when the clients have like some kind of feedback that they don't agree mm -hmm. But in general, it's like, oh, the client is the owner of the product that you're drawing for, and they know what they need most of the times. Yeah, most of the <laughs> time. Because yeah. your your illustration have to work in conjunction with other things. Mm -hmm. So don't worry too much. Like just do it. Yeah. It's sad sometimes because you said, oh. I like my idea. I would like to put this in the portfolio, but now it's ruined. I don't want to put it in the portfolio. Okay. Don't worry. You you have another chance to draw something yeah. else. <laughs> There's always more opportunities around the corner. Yeah. I was gonna I was gonna say something and I can't remember what it was now. That's, that's frustrating. Um Actually, we are like almost one hour in, and I we are, yeah. <laughs> and I did all three of them already. We can always, we can always uh, draw the people in the silhouettes if we need to. Yeah, yeah, we can do it, or I can erase this and do do some more, three more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For those of you who. Uh, might not have been here at the start then on our discord we have a text channel that's called twitch and if you look in there i've linked the uh, i've linked to a google drive that has all of the resources for today in there including this photoshop document which has the silhouettes on there do you call them silhouettes or outlines i don't know yeah, the people can be silhouettes yeah, yeah. Um, poses yeah the poses on there um, it's got some reference boards on there as well. So you can follow along if you like or save them for later. But whatever you do, make sure to, to share them with us in our Discord. We have a study room. We'd, we'd love to see you guys after after these streams. I love going in there and seeing what you've all come up with. Yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. And sometimes people like destroy us and do something yeah. <laughs> way cooler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't have, they don't have the pressure. That's why they don't have the pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, guys. Come on, yeah. take it easy. What the hell? <laughs> Taking this too serious. Uh, Marco said, if you think about it, a lot of stuff that we call art in origin were produced as artisan jobs, and the creators themselves had really few free choices on the on the making. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. You, you look at all of the yeah. all of those portraits, those famous portraits. Like you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know King, what the, the, the history of them. I don't know what the history of the Mona Lisa is, but <laughs> was that? Um... Yeah, it's like most of art that was produced in the past is commissions. Commissions. Someone is yeah, paying yeah. the artist to do it. Yeah. True. Um. Oh, Parongan, the, uh, the PSD from Alex Heath's stream is already out. Uh, I, I believe, let me just double check that I did upload it in there. Uh, I believe I put oh, it that in the stream news was amazing. section. Yes, if you go onto Discord in the news channel, uh, I've, I've put the Photoshop file in there. There's a, a link to the, the Google Drive. I put it in an announcement for everybody, but you might have missed it, that's okay. No, that's not okay. It's not okay! <laughs> <laughs> you have to pay attention to our Discord yeah. 24-7. <laughs> In that same announcement, actually, it's worth me mentioning again um, that we have put out our community feedback form. So it's a series of questions about our Twitch streams and about the Discord server and essentially what, what you guys think of the both of them and any feedback that you might have. Uh, if you guys 
wouldn't mind filling that out. That would be great. It'll only take a couple of minutes and a lot of the questions are, are optional anyway. So you can only fill out what's relevant to you. Um, if you yeah, do... you can rate if you like the in Jaden's beard or not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I should have had that as a question. Yeah, should have been like, should Jaden shave his beard? Yes or no? Next no, time. Or one to ten, what is the rating for Jaden's oh, beard? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I'll put, a, I'll put a link in the chat to the to the feedback form. Uh, it would help us a lot if you filled it in. It can really impact the content that we make going forward and any changes that we might make to the community as well. And as a, as a little bonus, if you get to the end and you give us your Discord name, then you'll be put in for a prize draw of, uh, of two months of Discord Nitro. So... Nice. There's a little bit of a little bit of an incentive for you, for you, but you don't have to do that. It can also be totally anonymous. Um, so, thank you very much. The the deadline for that is the seventh of January. So you've still got a while. But I'll remind I'll remind everyone that it's a thing periodically. Um, do they ask about the community manager? Because that guy is amazing and deserves a ten out of ten. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who is this guy? I don't know. But I'll pass. On, I'll pass on the information. It was Inessa that said that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> if you if you want the hydrate button to be only two hundred bits, the form is the way. Yeah, yeah. If you if you want the if you want the hydrate button to go down in price, put it in the feedback form. Um, along with other more helpful information would be great. <laughs> but thank you, uh, Fuan Art, for redeeming another hydrate. Thank you very much. You already sent your feedback. Well, then you don't have to worry about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Do you submit another one? Um, I don't think you can. I think it's limited to one per person. You can create a fake account. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, no, don't you do cannot. it. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> this one I thought about. Oh, uh, he's just getting a shower or something like the other yeah, he just he's just getting he's rained just... on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or it's just like a waterfall is just like falling on his head yeah <laughs> okay that can be like a uh, dragon ball z yeah, yeah. Super Saiyan. <laughs> Water, super, a Hydro Saiyan. Saiyan. <laughs> Hydrate Super Saiyan. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Jaden, tell us I... about you dressing as Santa for Christmas. That's why you're leaving the beard. I'm not dressing... Well, I could dress as Santa for Christmas. But that that is yeah. not that's not my original The last one. stream, last stream in the year, you have to be yeah. dressed as scent. Yeah, I just get, I'll just put some like talcum powder in my beard to make it look really grey, and I'll get a Santa hat. Maybe, maybe. I'll see what I'll see what the see what the boss says. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the community manager what he thinks about. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask. I'll ask the community manager. Uh, you will look like Jaden in retirement more than Santa. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> hmm. I'll do my old man voice throughout the whole stream. <laughs> no, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Moon Colony live stream, everybody. I'm Jaden. No. I'm your host, Jaden. <laughs> this is my last Old stream man. before retirement. 
<laughs> okay. Mm. This one, I'm thinking about maybe having some kind of swirl around it. Yeah. Kind of circular. Like a shield kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. Oh, I think Melissa just. I think Melissa gave us a bit of a backstory on the Mona Lisa earlier. Is the wife oh. of someone? Is the wife of someone rich, maybe a merchant, and it was an ordered portrait that was never delivered, left to his apprentice. Oh. Ah. Interesting. But, <laughs> man. Imagine if they could imagine if they could see it now. I bet they'd wish they got that delivered. <laughs> Sell that for a fortune. <laughs> Sell to someone and say, oh, this will work. This will be worth, a, be lot worth of money. a lot in a thousand years. <laughs> yeah, that, that thousand years. <laughs> Damn. Like five hundred years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? Just yeah, trust me. It Just would trust be... me. Would be a nice investment if yeah, you yeah, buy just this. Trust me, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever. We already had the first four ones, which are like three ones that I think are successful. So at these ones, I can play around. See what we can do with. Yeah. Don't worry about a thing. I like I like the ones where they look like they're just like hurling water forwards. I don't know why the poses are just always really cool. You mean this one that I'm working right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, conducting the water forwards like this. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just it, it, it it just kind of feels like a like a whip. Yeah, maybe. Uh, hey guys, I'd like to know, does Leone do mentorships? Leone does not do mentorships. Maybe. No, not at Which, the moment. Not at maybe the moment. Maybe in the future. Who knows? But, um, but we do have some mentorships coming up in the future for Lunar Academy, which is our mentorship program. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you want Leoni mentorship, uh, you have to bother <laughs> Jaden. Yeah, do not message bother Jade. <laughs> Jaden <laughs> um, <laughs> is making all the decisions. <laughs> um, but we we did our stylized mentorship earlier this year, and that went very well. But if you'd like to be kept in the loop for any future mentorships coming up uh, in the future, we do have a mailing list. So I'll, yeah. I'll put a link. I'll put a link to that in chat. So feel free to to sign up to that and be one of the first people to to find out when those mentorships are coming back. Mm -hmm. I did mentorships in the past, and yeah. it was nice. Uh, I had to stop. It was too much work. <laughs> 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 Trying to do several things at the same time. So, no. 
have to start. Yeah. Some people they annoy me with that. Say, hey, when are you going to come back with mentorships? <laughs> Uh, maybe sometime in the future. You don't know. Yeah, I suppose it can be quite hard, especially especially if you're working full time to find the to find the time and, and the energy to to do them. Yeah, and like I don't want to do something that is boring or bland. I want to do something that mm. is good, and I really want to help. I, I feel responsible when I see that the person is not progressing. I say, oh, I'm a terrible teacher. I cannot make <laughs> this person better or whatever, you know? No, I think I think you've got to remember that it's not it's not all down to you. You know, you can only Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard. Like I want yeah. people to succeed. I want them to get re really good mm -hmm. and be become better than me. <laughs> but sometimes I don't know. Uh, it's this is something that is interesting about uh, learning and things like that. That mm. sometimes people get things really quickly and they progress like lightning fast. Yeah. And some other people take their time and they are very slow learners. Um, and also have a lot thing to do with how much exercise people will actually do. Sometimes mm -hmm. people will just show up in the next meeting, said, "Oh, mm -hmm. I, I I drew nothing in a week or something." Mm -hmm. Said, "Yeah, okay, but I already told you everything that I know. Yeah, There's what, nothing what, else I can help you." <laughs> what am I supposed to teach you now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I used to be. I used to do that. I had, um, oh, this was, this was right at the start of high school. Um, I, I started learning saxophone and I'd go to my lessons and my teacher would be like, so how much have you practiced? And I'd be like, um, yeah, like, you know what? like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it's like two, two hours, maybe They're like in a week. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, like yeah. barely at all. And he'd be like, well, I don't really have much, I don't really have much yeah. to teach you then. Exactly. Like you have to do the first step before you go to the second step. Yeah. But since, since learning more things on my own, I've, I've found that I've really had to plan my time out a bit more, you know? Put some time in the in the calendar. Like, okay, I'll spend you know, three, four hours a week every yeah. evening. For me, one thing that works is that I have to uh, make studying fun mm. somehow. Yeah. You know? So I'm not good at doing repetitive tasks like um, learning an instrument, doing scales or whatever. I, I yeah. will not do it. I would try to learn a song that I have to learn a technique to play that yeah. song. So I will do that. For example, I want to draw an illustration when I have a character that water bends. So I would do the study thinking about the application. You know? mm -hmm. When you have to think about, oh, I'll do studies like just because, just because I need to study. Yeah, sometimes mm -hmm. can be hard to maintain yourself like in a positive um, mindset you know it yeah. can be boring so try to make studying fun and interesting i don't know yeah i mean there's 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 no point doing it if you find it boring right so <laughs> that's that's something that i i struggle with as well at the minute i'm learning to play uh, to play bass and like, as you said like learning the scales is just a matter of <laughs> just repeating them over and over and over and over and over again and yeah they're not difficult but it's not exactly a fun thing to to learn yeah and 
it's also very difficult not to be uh, anxious. So you yeah. have to, it's, we want to do fast. But yeah. uh, you have to take your time, be very slow, and do one note at a time. This mm -hmm. is the same thing with drawing. So uh, I see a bunch of people that are beginners and they want to draw a complex scene with mm -hmm. 10 characters fighting a dragon or whatever. Okay, this is too much. <laughs> Chill out, do just like a face of a character, a hand yeah. or a feet yeah. or a whatever, uh, and go slow, do one study at a time. Mm. I think it's nice if you have the the will to do complex scenes and things like that. It's yeah. cool. You can try sometimes, but uh, if you only try to do complex stuff, I think it's a recipe for failure, you know, and you feel bad about your skills. Yeah, but you're trying you're trying things that are really difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you're more likely to stick. I think you're more likely to stick with with whatever hobby it is, whether it's drawing or, or, or an instrument or whatever. You're more likely to stick with it if you do take it slow, because you're not gonna get as frustrated as if you jumped in at the deep at the deep end. And yeah, start, and also uh, try and draw a masterpiece. This, this thing about I, I have to draw like eight hours per day or whatever. Mm. Yeah, you you can do that for a week, but then uh, you'll be burned. Burned out. You'll yeah. be burned out, and you're, yeah. you you cannot do it for a long period of time. It's important mm. to have consistency, and even if you have just one hour, for example, to practice. If you do it consistently, it's better than doing like uh, eight hours per day in a week and then six months without doing anything. Yeah. Which happens uh, a lot. Uh, oh, for sure. And the thing is, uh, this happens w uh, with me with music. For example, I have a folder with music ideas. Mm -hmm. And I, I when I know, see the dates, it's like, it's, I don't know, July 2022, I have 10 ideas. And then for six months, I have nothing, <laughs> you know. Because sometimes you're in the mood of thinking about that, sometimes you're not. Yeah. I mean, it even goes to show when, a way to show it is, is when you've been playing a game, if you play a game for like two weeks, and then you get burnt out from it. You then take a break for, I mean, even even if you take a break for a month, you come back to it and you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I don't remember how this game works at all. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing with drawing, I suppose, where you just, you lose all of that that knowledge that you had. Yeah, uh, you, you maintain some. So yeah. like the muscle memory, muscle memory. and yeah. some of, yeah, of your, understanding actually like taking a break sometimes can be good in the sense of you develop your visual library yeah. and your skills as an artist like in your mind also not just drawing because when you're practicing you're developing your hand your coordination mm -hmm. and also your mind of course but i i think even if i stop drawing for a while and I consume references and think about art a lot, mm -hmm. I'm still learning something, even yeah. it's less. Of course, you will learn way more if you actually put into practice. Mm -hmm. But you can act uh, actually practice without the, the, the pen. You know? Pen, yeah. <laughs> For example, one thing that I think most artists do is when you're having a conversation, you're looking at the uh, other person's face and thinking about the proportions and how the <laughs> light affects the yeah the shapes of the face or whatever oh man i don't think i don't think i ever want to hear an artist in a monologue while they're looking at my face <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, sounds it's, it's disturbing <laughs> yeah it can be sometimes <laughs> yeah, Melissa's just put in the chat like a psycho you stare into their paws thinking how you didn't see by now that they're, 
um, that there's a texture material there. Yeah. Um, I do that a lot because I, I tend to, like, my mind tends to go away to somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. So sometimes someone is talking to me and I'm just looking at the hue variation in the skin or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, I wish I wish my brain went somewhere. Sometimes I'll be talking to someone and my brain will just walk off. It won't it won't give me any information. It will just walk off and then I'll come back into the room at like 10 seconds later and have no idea what's happened. Yeah, one thing that happens to me sometimes is that my mind goes to somewhere else and I completely lost track of time. I don't know if it's like 10 seconds or one minute yeah. that I was not paying attention and I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. What did I do? I was or not when... paying attention. <laughs> or when you can tell that they've just asked you a question and you have no idea what they've said and you're just like, um, yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, Flo said, <laughs> okay, so you're having a, if you're having a conversation with Leone, he's not listening, he's studying your face. Yes. Yes, probably. So when I was in the UK and I was watching everyone in the studio. Yeah. So how Jaden's posture can be so straight? This is like the straightest <laughs> posture I ever seen. <laughs> I don't know, man. The way I... he, he walks like a like, a, walk robot like a robot. Yeah. <laughs> this is where it's not that straight. No, no, normally. I think it, I think it was. Subconsciously, I was trying to make myself l look look better than I do. I'd swear my posture normally isn't that good. <laughs> it's a weird day when you have to defend your bad posture. course this never happens in the lunar lounge we all pay attention all the time oh yeah for sure no one nobody ever zones out in the in the discord voice chat never yeah especially especially not, not me yeah it's not like i'm watching a youtube video at the same time someone is talking to me or whatever yeah some days some days i'll have music playing i'll have I'll be talking to people in the Discord, and then I'll also have like a YouTube video on in the background as well <laughs> while I'm doing stuff. My brain just needs all of the input. Yeah, this this can actually be a pretty huge problem, right? Yeah. Like, uh, we are training our brains to be constantly yeah uh, be bombarded by information all the time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I I try to keep it quiet, so I turn everything off and I just yeah. focus a little bit. Yeah. And it's weird because I'm always watching something, listening to something. Mm -hmm. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, I've I've been thinking something that um, Matt Osland said. Uh, quite a while ago when we had him on the stream he, he said that sometimes he'll just sit there and he, he won't listen to anything he won't watch anything he'll just sit there just stare at a wall just to just to relax yeah, his it, brain I, and I, I was I think it's of, good I've been thinking recently about doing that just turning turning my brain off and just like watching paint dry essentially just doing literally nothing yeah, uh, I think it's 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 good at least I don't know five to ten minutes a day. Oh yeah, yeah. I will be just uh, staring at nothing. I turn off every uh, impulse, everything. Yeah. And just try to focus on the moment. Mm. You know, take a time, take your time, relax a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, it's called meditation and it's good. Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it is meditation, isn't it? That's, that's true. In my head, I have a. In my head, meditation is when you have the 
person who's like, now close your eyes and imagine you're on a faraway island. And I'm like, no, okay, I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's like, I think meditation would be considered if you follow a technique or something, mm. or you have, uh, you control your breath and yeah. you control your mind to be in a certain state or whatever. Mm -hmm. But even if you don't do that, just turn off the stimulus, you know? Yeah. I think this is good. Yeah. But meditation can be interesting, I think. I don't know. Yeah. Never tried. I've tried to do guided meditation before and it never it never works out well for me it just makes me um just makes me laugh a lot of the time because <laughs> it's always just so i don't know it was just fun it's so awkward you know where it's like imagine you're on a beach and the sand no. between your toes and the waves crashing against the, the, the shore and i'm like and ah. you'll raise your hand and say uh excuse me uh the nearest beach is a thousand kilometers away. I don't know <laughs> yeah. how it feels. <laughs> I've never seen the ocean. Can you explain <laughs> it in more detail, please? <laughs> <laughs> Eat a meditation. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be like Lynch. I said, I'm just going to be like a cat. Just sat there staring at a wall. That's gonna be. Um, that's gonna be me. What is, they, what is it that they call it? A dunce corner where like you just sat in the you're sat in the corner staring at the the wall because you did something bad in class or something. So this is is actually a nice exercise, right? Yeah. It is for now it um, six options. Yeah. Would be this, this. Different nice. ideas for the same pose. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've got about. Um, 35 minutes left, I don't know if you, what you want to do. We can keep talking, you know, keep chatting, drawing, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can always, we can always cut it down a little bit early if we need to. Yeah. I want to know if someone is drawing with us and if you've got something interesting already. Yeah, let me share yeah, me in the Discord. Oh, Crafts has put some in the Discord. Those are really cool. Nice. But yeah, if anyone else is uh, following along with us, then share it in our study room on Discord. I'd love to see what you've got so far. Yeah. Even if they're please. even if they're not finished yet, That'd be cool. Yeah, you can put on sketches and whip also. Yeah, you can put it in sketches and whip, yeah. Dash said, I like those guided meditations that tell you to focus on your breathing or certain parts of your body. Um, those imagine you're on a beach ones are so silly to me. Yeah, I think it, it, it depends what you're into, right? Like, I, I remember when... When I was at university, I, I had some insomnia and something that helped me was um there's that headspace app which is nice but they had a really nice short story in there about this an antique shop and it was just about walking into the antique shop and all of the items that were on the shelf and it would it would go into detail about what each of these items looked like and the smell of the shop and everything and that was really relaxing yeah. I don't know if it was quite, I don't know if I'd say it was like meditation, but it helped a little bit with my, uh, like sending me to sleep. So I can see why other people would 
would like to listen to that and meditate to that for sure. Yeah. Uh, Casey Perongan said, I just listened to brown noise. Which one's brown noise? I know white <laughs> noise is just like the static hiss. Yeah, if you put like rain sounds, things like that can be relaxing. Yeah. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, uh, probably about well, between the ages of five and ten, um, I had this machine that you'd push a button and it would play. There was like a thunderstorm. There was the seaside and you could hear like all the seagulls and everything. Um, yeah. What else was there? I don't know. Those are the only two that I ever used, but there was like four or five different buttons on there that all had different sound, like soundscapes. And it was really nice. And then I moved on to audiobooks. Uh, Ignacio said, I use the second hand app that imitates headspace. I got it got robbed and stabbed. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> in your trip <laughs> in your story you got robbed and stabbed very good <laughs> nice um, brown noise is just the same as white noise but low frequency oh okay I think that would give me anxiety hearing all that static don't know if I could do that okay so um, what I'm doing right now I'm Applying more of uh, transparency, so mm -hmm. it looks more like water realistically. Yep. It's stylized yet, uh, uh, still, but a little bit less because there's a little bit of transparency into it. Yeah, it looks nice with some transparency. Especially That's this a... one. I think this will look cool like this, you know, uh, with the yeah. transparency. Uh, Dash said, I'm surprised we're not spamming hydrates today. <laughs> yeah, come on. I yeah. was prepared for more hydrates. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even halfway through my bottle yet. Uh, so I'm but... actually hydrating right now. Yeah, I was going to say, Dash did redeem our hydrate. Oh, here we go. We got a couple more. Three Let's more. go, Thank guys. You. Four more. <laughs> Five more. <laughs> There's ever a stream to do it, this is the stream. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe if we're drawing like a desert scene or a volcan volcano scene. <laughs> Make more sense because we need more water. We need more water, yeah. <laughs> um, have we caught up? Yes, we have. Oh, nice. yeah. two, two more coming through. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's just like being on an airplane. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, wow, you go straight in with the eraser and the mask. Are you just erasing to create transparency? People yeah. are impressed. Yeah, it's like I'm erasing. Because yeah. this is just for fun. This is a study. It's not mm -hmm. actual work or anything. If I would do this for work, I would probably create a mask. Mm-hmm. Because it's, this is just quick drawings, if I don't like the way I did the transparency, I can put color back on pretty yeah. quickly. Just do that and do that. Okay, it's not as transparent anymore. Mm Uh, you can see that I didn't use any fancy brushes or anything, but you can use, I don't know, like brushes that 
give you more things like that can be interesting yeah. right yeah a little bit of spray spray splashes you're a water bender but you're a messy one just throwing it everywhere <laughs> Actually, we got we got asked earlier what elements we would control, but what elements would chat control in, if you were in Avatar? If you were in the Avatar universe, not the James Cameron one, <laughs> what, <laughs> what would you control? I think I saw earlier Alan said that he would he would use fire so that he could make a bonfire easier and it would be nice and warm <laughs> and he could cook his food on it. <laughs> yeah actually fire maybe is the only one that i don't know I, I, in the show if someone can create fire or they just bend fire that already I, exists i don't remember i then thought that exact same thing i remember i seem to remember them creating fire like when they do their martial arts and stuff yeah But, yeah yeah they do yeah yeah But Because... they're the only one they're the only one that can just make their element but to be fair you can bend air everywhere in earth well yeah, yeah that's true so it, so it, this is easier i think yeah. air is the the most uh useful one and that's mm -hmm. also uh the earth one would be like you always have earth to bend probably yeah yeah i mean yeah the earth one the earth one would be really cool The thing that I don't like about about air is that it's I don't know it, it's invisible. Feels weak, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. But I would not. I would uh, when I when you ask me, oh, what would be your element? I would say, I said air, because of the personality, not because of the use. Mm. Yeah, I didn't even think about the. I didn't even think. Personality wise. I think I would be our water or air bender. Hmm. Arongan said water. 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 Um Alan said also I could do a barbecue. <laughs> um Dash said air probably. I'd love to just fly around. Skullpels at air, so I could just escape my responsibilities. Um, winds to fly and move like a fairy. Very wholesome. Love that. Ozan said I'd be an airbender. No, it's not weak. Yeah. No, didn't you watch how how Tenzin fights? I don't know. I only got through half of the first season of Avatar, I think. Yeah, I, I, I watched no Avatar, but it was long time ago in the galaxy far, far away the details yeah i can't remember if i finished the first season or if i just got like halfway through it but yeah i i think i watch it kind of uh, out of order you know oh yeah it was arian tv so i watch one episode and then one week later i watch another one <laughs> When, when I was a kid, it was awful because it was airing on TV, but they only ever showed like the same three episodes over and over and over and over and over again. So oh, yeah. I I could just remember three random episodes. And it was. Uh, and I think yeah. that's what put, that's what put me off it for a long time, because I was just so sick of watching the same three episodes. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. But no, I have been told that I need to I need to finish I need to watch it, but it's not it's not top of my list right now. Yeah. I think my younger brother was more into Avatar than me. Like mm -hmm. I always liked it and I watched it. I think he actually followed through uh, every episode. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, Alan said that he was the same as me, but with Dragon Ball. They just kept showing the same episodes of Dragon Ball. Yeah, or uh, Knights of the Zodiac, like Cavaleiros do Zodiac. <laughs> when we were kids, uh, they had because like the the TV channel, they buy mm -hmm. some episodes. They they only yeah. have like ten episodes, so they go <laughs> through them like every time. And I I was. Every time I was getting to the episode that I know that was the final one, I said, okay, tomorrow we have a new episode, please. And then <laughs> back to the Start first. again. No! <laughs> <laughs> I need to know how the story ends. Come on. When I was at university, I started watching Dragon Ball, the original series, not, not Dragon Ball Z. And um, I got through most of it and I was like, that was pretty good. I enjoyed that a lot. And then I got to Dragon Ball Z and there was like four episodes of Goku running along a, just, a, just a road. He was just running yeah. along a road in the middle of nowhere. And I was like, yeah, I think I'm good. I think I don't, I, I, I'm not, I don't care enough to finish watching this. <laughs> you know what? Uh, one thing that is very funny is that when I was a teenager, in my home we had a like a, a, a video tape <laughs> machine or something yeah. that could record. And one of my friends knew that, and he said, "Oh, I have like a cousin or whatever that wants to watch the Dragon Ball Z. Can you record for him?" <laughs> I said, yeah. "Yeah." So it every time, like by the end of the day, uh. A dude that was an adult that come with a motorcycle <laughs> uh, comes in front of my house and deliver me something and I deliver something for this guy <laughs> and my parents would like, what the hell is this? <laughs> what is this dude? I, and I said, I don't know this guy. They're like it's a random dude, but I was recording the episodes for him. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, Ozan said it's the same here. Sometimes it was going backwards. They're streaming previous episodes over and over. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's Why? tough. What? What was funny as well okay. was. I don't know. You, yeah, what were you going to say? No, I think I'm done with this. Yeah. This. It's okay. Good enough. I, I think I preferred uh, the second one for this guy this is like a little too graphical probably yeah Need a little bit of the flowy water I was gonna thing. say yeah but, a bit of a flow yeah this one I, I like uh, my idea was to draw something that's more aggressive like spikes or something mm -hmm. but could be better maybe with eyes yeah yeah but that's okay it's like a sketch this one flows a little bit better. I like this one. Uh, it's kind of chaotic. You don't know mm -hmm. where the the water is flowing. If it's like going from the middle to the back or something like that. Um, yeah. But I, I like the the complexity of it. This one is nice also. And I like the the bottom one. It's too. Uh, versions of the same thing I, I would say mm. um, this one is more like flowing around and the other one yeah. would be more like a attack probably I was going to say the first one looks more like a party trick whereas the second one looks more like it's an attack or, <laughs> or something yeah no that's cool party trick <laughs> imagine <laughs> you like this yeah yes. a... Look what, you can, what I can do <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're done, we can we can always call it there. End yeah, it a little bit earlier. Does yeah. anyone have any questions, like last yeah. things that you want to ask? Yeah, any last minute questions or anything? Time. This is your time. I, I've been mastering this elemental art for decades, Jaden. Nice party trick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That is that is very much something that I would do. That's the thing. Okay. Let me organize this file. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do please. Mastery of the elements. Mastery. Party tricks. Oh. No. He's forgotten how to use Photoshop. Yeah, I'm just clicking random stuff. Okay, <laughs> I can show you how I organize a file. Look at it. <laughs> the trick so is... I can't, I... <laughs> <laughs> I just converted this to smart objects so I can make them smaller and if I want I can make them bigger again so just to make it more uh, organized yeah and this is like transparent background right yeah convert to smart object so smart, when you make it a smart object, that just means that you can resize it without losing any of the quality? Exactly. It's like, it's it's creating like a file inside a file. So if I open this, it's like a separate oh, thing. Oh, cool. So All I right. can resize, do whatever I want with this. Yeah. And so if I of... resize it back, it maintains all yeah. the characteristics. Okay. So it's kind of like you're making it almost like a vector image, right? Yeah, it's like a file inside the file. The file, yeah. And one thing that is it's nice, for example, I have this. Imagine this is something that I want to be repeated a lot. Mm -hmm. And I like I already did that, but because it's a smart object, I, I can open this and make a change here. Make for a change example, in that I one. want to be, and I save it. It will be applied here. You know. Oh, okay. Cool. So. It's good if you have something that you need a lot of repetition. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, sometimes uh, uh, one time I had to do a candy jar yeah. with different types of candy. So I, I drew one of each, like four or five, and I created like a hundred smart objects. <laughs> so I opened the candy number one, rendered that, save, and like it's already all of them are done. Oh, that's all nice. All of them are rendered. You know, yeah. You can That's do cool. the stuff like that with smart objects. Yeah. But uh, if you do it, uh, you're creating a file inside the file, so your files start to get, pretty get big. big. Yeah. So you have to be mindful about that. Mm -hmm. um, we actually have a question from Alan. Um, he says after <laughs> this. Did. After this sketching step, how do you control it to not overpaint it? Uh, like it's like, how do you not like, overpaint it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, usually I I stop when I think already conveys the idea. Yeah. So if I if I can't stop right now, I will. I will. I don't want to overdo it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about having an interesting shape, a nice read, uh, value-wise in terms of colors and things like that. And if it's working, like I would not render this a lot. Uh, like, of course, if this is, was an illustration, uh, I would polish this a little bit, the edges and some of the inner details, but not a lot. Yeah. I would not put like, a million bubbles or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially for a study. Like once you once you know you can convey, once you know you yeah, can get the shapes I, and convey the the idea. But I I, I know yeah. what Alan means because I know that uh, he struggles with controlling how much render he puts, uh, okay. how much time he puts into stuff. Yeah. So I know what the the, the concern. Yeah. Uh. But for me, it's just, I don't know how I do it. I just stop at the moment. I, I think it's readable enough. It's good enough. Mm -hmm. 
doesn't need more I say okay stop go to the next one yeah don't need to overdo it mm -hmm. uh, Casey Prongan says uh, I have a question about how how would you go about doing refraction in the water when lighting and environments are present oh this is Ooh. a tricky one yeah I was gonna say that's a tough uh, one yeah, I. It's like. Uh, you can be very scientific about it, mm -hmm. and actually study and think about what uh, the light rays do when they interact with water. If they like bend upwards or downwards or whatever. But uh, because, especially when we do illustrations, we are just trying to convey an idea we will reflect what is behind in a way that looks good in the illustration it doesn't matter if it's correct or not so you can just like displace a little bit the part of the body of the character for example that is behind water and maybe warp it a little bit but i don't know it will be a case by case thing yeah probably yeah, I think you see a lot of people who just do like a little a little wobble of what's through the um, when you're looking through the water. I think it's just a little bit. Yeah, wavy. it's like a yeah, just wobble a little bit. Yeah. Probably will be good enough. Of course, also depends on how much water you have in front of your subject or your environment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like case by case thing. Yeah, it's hard to answer. Um, then she says, "How do you organize? How do you organize all your Photoshop files that pile up with time? Do you save them on a different hard drive?" Oof. Yeah, I have yeah. a external hard drive that I dump all my files. In my computer, I only have the things that I'm working at the moment, and then when I finish, I save it on the external hard drive. Uh, for like for work stuff, I have a folder for yeah work, of course. But for my personal stuff, I have uh, folders that are named uh, like 2023, uh, like 11, which is the month, and 28, for example. If I mm -hmm. do that, my files will be always organized from like oldest to newest. So I have a uh, like this month folder, and then inside that I can have like the files itself. Yeah. Uh, I'm not good at naming my files, so which is not very nice because, like, if I want to ser uh, search for this in my folders, <laughs> sometimes I can be lost. Uh, what is the file that had the the water bending? The I don't know. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because sometimes I, I would I, actually this file is called Moon Colony Water Bending, so I would know. But if I'm mm -hmm. drawing for myself, I would just name it. Uh, 23 11 28 so it's like the, today's date and it, that's yeah it. <laughs> yeah that's that that's what i've done before and i thought well this is a really good system when you you name it the date and then you realize about two months later you're like well i have no idea what date i did this on i just want to know <laughs> i just want to know yeah i, I, I like what's to in do the that file. Yeah, I like to do that to to see the progress of things that I do and like what days I did things. But maybe you can do this for folders, but inside the folder mm -hmm. you actually name the the file. I don't know. Yeah, I have I to wonder... come up with something that is uh, easier because I always when I'm saving files, I, I think, oh, this is obvious. But yeah. when I try to search for it, like I cannot find it. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if you can add. I mean, this is going into questions that aren't really related to this stream I, I wonder if you can add like tags onto files so that if you typed in so you could name the file like today's date and then have a tag that is water bending so i don't when know when you when you searched water bending it came up even though it's not in the title i mean it's it's for something that is not yeah. relevant to art at all but you know <laughs> just thinking yeah, it's a loud. good question yeah. Um, AC said Eagle App, really useful. Eagle App is tagging met metadata. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, there's, there's loads of different ways you could do it. Cool. Well, I think 
I think that's us uh, done for today then. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. It's been nice to, to chat with you. And uh, I, I hope to see some amazing, uh, amazing waterbenders in the, in the Discord as well. And thank you, Leone, for, for coming along today. I much appreciate it. Um, even though I was concerned earlier, thought, thought we were going to have <laughs> to move it. Um, Don't worry. But yeah. Thank you. We are, uh, we are back with you tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. Um, so yeah. tomorrow we're going to do uh, frame, uh, movie frames. Yes. We're going to yeah, do some illustrations. Be... Yeah, we're going to be studying some some movie frames and doing some of that. We've done a bit of it in the Discord voice chats before, and it's a fun exercise, especially if you're sort of fairly. I think if you're fairly new to art, it's a good one to do as well. So yeah, um, come along to that. It'll be good fun. It's same time tomorrow. Um, but thanks again. Don't forget about our feedback form that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can find that in the Discord too. But until then, stick around and I'll find someone for us to raid. But we'll see you tomorrow. So, bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.